Hi there and welcome to this tutorial for the Strider plugin in Unreal Engine 4. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the acceleration warp or lean warp node, see what it does, how to set it up and all of its settings. So let's quickly see what it does first in this um, sort of test setup. And we have this main input for acceleration and we also have direction. Let's have a look at what happens when we change this acceleration value. So if we increase it, the character leans forward. If we decrease it, the character leans back. Now, the point of this is to either lean the character just statically, uh, like we're doing here, or to actually pass in acceleration values. Now that's the acceleration, actual calculated acceleration value from your delta velocity, not, or, or your delta speed, not necessarily your, um, the acceleration value you get from your character capsule because that's not a proper acceleration value. Just be aware of that. Uh, so this is what it does. The idea is you change this value at runtime. So when your character is actually accelerating, he does a lean and then comes back into a more upright position. Uh, sometimes I use this uh, when I have sprints and I don't have a sprint animation. I just smash up the lean while sprinting and I put it back to zero. And that's more of like a lean uh, warp situation. The other thing is we can also set the direction. And I often use the same direction as I use for orientation warping nodes and stride warping nodes. And basically this allows us to lean in the direction that we're actually moving. So if I change the direction, you can see the orientation warping node there. If I uh, accelerate, I'm still leaning in the direction, not forward. So I'm leaning in the direction my character's moving, not forward. So that is the acceleration warping node. Let's have a look at how we can set this up in a somewhat blank scene. Let's add the node through the acceleration warp and connect the input and output pose pins. It's a local space, so we don't need any conversions. Let's promote the acceleration value to a variable. I'm going to call it Accel, and it's going to be between negative 10 and positive 10. Obviously, you're going to want to have more reasoning behind the values. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. Uh, you know, it's dependent on the range of actual acceleration values you are going to pass in in your specific game. So here we have the settings and the first thing we need to do is set up some bone references as usual. In this case, we only have a spine chain and I'm only gonna do, actually I'm gonna do all the way up to the head from spine one, spine two, spine three, then the head and, oh sorry, that was supposed to be the neck. Okay, so the spine chain is set up, but there's a little bit more we need to do here for it to make sense. Because there's two things that happen. We're not just bending the torso in the direction we're going, we're bending the lower torso in the direction we wanna go, and we want the rest of the torso to bend backwards so that they're still facing forwards. If I change the acceleration value now, you'll see that my character is just kind of looking up and down. Um, I could change the weighting so that it's you know heavier on the lower spine. However, what I want to do is actually have the lower spine bend down and the upper spine bend back up so we're looking forward. And we can do this with a trick with the weightings. If we set a weight to negative, a negative value, it's going to rotate in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna say the neck, the head, and spine three are all gonna rotate in the opposite direction. Spine one is gonna rotate in the direction of the lean. and spine two, I'm gonna set that as a weight of zero. It's not gonna lean at all. Remember, don't leave any gaps in your spine chain. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. So let's accelerate now. And you can see that the character is now facing forward. I'm gonna change the maximum torso bend to um, 45 and change the torso blend ratio to 4.5. So you can see because we had an acceleration between negative 10 and 10, it makes sense that our torso blend ratio is gonna be uh, a multiple of 10 of the max torso blend. So let's compile that and just so we can see this in an extreme case, a 45 degree blend. Um, you'll notice that the first bone is rotated all the way, the second bone isn't rotated, and then the three subsequent bones after that are rotated adversely so that our final bone is still facing forward. You could do this so it happens even at the chest and we can even change the weightings. So for example, we might want to make it so that the uh, spine 
does you know negative 0.75 or say negative 0.5 the neck does negative 0.75 and then the head does all the rest uh, let's see how that looks that's a bit more of a intense lean and a and ne neck kink there so maybe more like um we want to make the bend back more in the spine. We set the neck and the head to 0 0.5 and this one to negative one. And you get the idea how that works and that works in both directions. Again, we can expose this direction pin if we want to apply a direction, which we probably should if we're using it with stride warping and orientation warping nodes. Obviously, we want to accelerate in the direction we're going, not just forward and backwards all the time. So that is a value you can set. Let's set this to a reasonable 30 degrees and, and a ratio of three. Uh, what else can we do? We can set a smoothing rate and you're probably gonna wanna do this because just like uh, bank warping, your acceleration calculations can be very um, uh, sensitive. And so you don't want sudden changes to snap the character back and forward. So let's add in some smoothing. I'll start with 10. Acceleration up, that's a bit too slow. Maybe 50. This is obviously in degrees per second. And you can see how it's now a smooth movement from back to front. Or if we set it to negative one, it'll just be instant. So there you go. That is the acceleration warping node. Another very simple node, but can be very effective if used in the right way, whether that's for pure acceleration or for just leaning for whatever reason you wanna lean. So thank you all for watching. That was the last of the five nodes. We've gone through all of them now. If you haven't seen those or you've missed those, go back and watch them. The next tutorial is gonna be quite a long one because it's a full, um, more or less uncut walkthrough of setting up an animation graph using these nodes. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. I'll see you around.